even with the outset, you know, since we did a long beta test cycle as well, uh, and actually, quite frankly, even before we launched the beta test, uh, you know, there were already kind of guilds and you know subgroups forming for various purposes. Uh, so when we went live day one, we already had a fairly rich community activity already. Uh, but and so it's and so it's evolved very quickly from there. And and of course, the evolution, like you say, is very early in its uh, long-term build. Uh, but almost immediately, you saw things like, uh, you know, the game supports you know a huge array of activities. There's about uh, about half the players participate in what you might consider adventuring in the sense that they go out and hunt creatures or monsters and collect treasure and you know build up their either magic or combat skills and about half the community participates in what you might call the economy in the sense of they generally hang out in towns they develop their skills of creation uh, and trade and they kind of build the infrastructure that supports society and Interestingly, those people tend to be what I might describe as the better personal role-playing gamers. In a sense of, you know, I'm a uh, purist when it comes to the definition of the term role-playing games, and I think there are very few computer games which really classify as role-playing games in the marketplace. You know, a role-playing game is, in my mind, a, a game whose structure uh, encourages kind of uh, theatrical play on the part of the players. Uh, and, you know, I consider role-playing kind of the most base form of play that goes back to your earliest play in childhood where you would take G.I. Joe's or Legos and you know you talk about the adventures of these characters that's role-playing and uh, a game which encourages that is uh, 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 is a true role-playing game so sorry about that digression but uh, uh, how these communities are building again uh, you know first we have that kind of split the next thing we have is uh, you know, the, the next kind of split that showed up is a lot of the early adopters of Ultima were kind of fell into two camps. One of which are the role-playing gamers, the, a, a la lots of old Ultima players. And another big camp is what you might call the Quake, Doom, Diablo players, uh, who came into the game and immediately started to rampage. And their whole, the, you know, their their philosophy of life was bent upon destruction of each other and everybody else. Mm -hmm. Well. Uh, you know, and, and this group of players, of course, uh, you know, cries foul play, to which we as the creators go, no, 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 that's not foul play. It just needs to be very carefully managed within the fictional scope of the game. Uh, so that was kind of the first kind of split. Uh, then another thing that came up as, as that kind of settled and as the rules of the game and the laws within Britannia kind of being to kind of draw lines in the sand of safety uh, and uh, the proper amount of safety and the proper amount of uh, fear. Uh, the next thing that began is uh, what I'll call kind of player-built cities and player-built communities. One of the things you can do in the game is you can buy hard assets like homes and castles and things of that nature. And we're beginning to see now, uh, you know, villages independent of the uh, Britannian uh, protection of the main cities start up in the world, which means these player-built cities have to self-regulate, self-govern, self-protect, uh, uh, which takes a pretty large commitment on the part of a large number of players to really pull it off successfully. So uh, as those evolve, we've also need, had to help, even within game code, support that endeavor because we like that community emerging. And so people would do things like, uh, um, you know, you can, uh, like I mentioned, you can build homes and you can lock that home and you can hire a guard to guard the home. Uh, but other very clever players would find uh, clever ways to break in, so to speak. Uh, for example, people found that they could get into the inside of castles by building, by ha using their carpentry skills to build crates and then stacking crates like a staircase <laughs> and, uh, you know, and invade the castle walls in that fashion. Uh, so uh, you know, some of the players went, hey, that's cheating, to which we went as the creators. We went, no, that's not. That's perfectly fair. Mm -hmm. However, we, don't, we want you to be able to protect your home, so now we've added the feature of traps. So they can actually set along the battlements uh, entrapments to protect themselves. So we're we're feeding, they are continually feeding these communities with new features mm -hmm. to help kind of uh, support the reality that's building. And what the players are finally now, after a couple of months of playing, realizing, I mean, even some of our most vocal um, complainers of two months ago have now become our most ardent supporters now. And of course, they're playing the whole time through. Uh, as they realize. You know that no, no, no. It's you know we shouldn't make rules to just stop things which are uh, which some people don't like. 
we should provide people the tools by which they can discourage play styles they don't like. Uh, and so the community can build itself. Yeah. And players are learning that new play paradigm, which heretofore has not really existed 